Good evening, everybody. It is Saturday night, or at least I think it is. It might not be. I don't really know. I haven't known what day it is for a very long time. I'm now feeling very grateful for all the rather lukewarm things I went to before this lockdown nonsense started, because they were the last time I got to actually uh, be around other human beings. Because it's good for the spirit sometimes, you know, it's good for the soul to get dressed up put on some makeup, do one's hair, blah blah blah. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any occasion or event to be getting dressed up for for a very long time. It's Saturday night, I'm feeling in the mood for experimenting with makeup a little bit. So how about we get dressed up to go absolutely nowhere. <laughs> up if you can't wait to hug someone. I've got here some cider in a wine glass. I've been feeling inspired to do something a wee bit different with my makeup. Um, oh, also you might notice, or maybe you don't, during the quarantine I know a lot of us have let ourselves go to seed a little bit, or we've let our hair grow out or get manky or we've, we've cut it off completely. I thought that what I would make for my quarantine project is just to let my eyebrows grow back, just because I didn't really know what they looked like. Please forgive all the blotches on my face. Um, so this makeup will be a little bit of a challenge because I've completely grown my eyebrows back. Can you see them? They're there. They're transparent, but they're actually pretty bushy. This is what it looks like when I have my eyebrows fully grown back. So that's why I always say for me it doesn't particularly matter when I shave them off because it doesn't really change anything. It just makes it a little bit harder to put on eyeshadow and stuff. But I've been enjoying having eyebrows because less soap gets in my eyes when I wash my hair. So I'm going to start off by applying a wee bit of this blue primer of which I'm so fond. Uh, you know, gotta get a gotta get a nice base. Every building needs a good foundation. With these get ready with me videos, I usually don't talk through them, but I don't know about you, but every person I have spoken to, and I'm a very terrible communicator, every person I have spoken to, I've like talked their friggin' ears off. It's like built up in me. I'm like, I need to talk, I need to communicate. <laughs> Just like that. I have not seen blue primer from anywhere except Australis. It's called Ice Queen. It's perfect if you're pasty ginger like me and you just want a bit of something on your face. Because it's the 20s again, I've been feeling a bit inspired by 1920s looks and like silent movie actress looks. And also, I, as usual, I do a massive amount of research on the 17th and 18th centuries and the makeup looks bizarrely between the 18th century and the 1920s. There's elements that are actually fairly similar and so I'm going to try ever so slightly and incorporate those elements into my face today. But for those of you who followed me for a long time, I usually just, you know, cake foundation on. I found that putting that on a wee bit thinner is a bit better. I don't know if that's an age thing, uh, but I'm finding that for some reason when I when I put makeup on thickly, when I put foundation on thickly, there's something about it that I think makes one look older. You know what? All the people, there were so many people who were like, Ugh, in my recent transformation video where I put on my ginger wig and stuff, who were saying that I shouldn't have worn white, fa white face paint. It's like, I didn't. That's just my face. Thank you. This is white foundation, okay? And as you will see, it's actually quite a lot lighter. And also, I, I, I'm going through another phase of slightly changing the shape of my eyebrows. I have certainly had some stupid eyebrows. So right now, I am wearing the t-shirt that I slept in. I pretty much live in this t-shirt. It's from Belial, Belial, however you want to pronounce it, clothing. I pretty much just live in this t-shirt these days. A tiny bit of concealer. Just a dab. Being very much into a 1900s, 1910s kind of aesthetic. They say that every 20 years or so things come back into fashion. I mean, what's, what's 120 years? If I'm going out to a party or a gig or something, I normally drink but while I'm getting ready and preloading, you know, because drinks of bars are expensive. <laughs> Should be contouring with a bit of grey, a bit of matte grey. Yes, I know I'm bad at contouring. That's one of the reasons I have so much hair over the side of my face so that you can't tell. When people follow my makeup tutorials, of which I have like maybe two, I always follow the jaw contouring thing. Like, I, you don't have to do that. I just do it because I have got quite a round jaw, I guess, and I don't particularly like the shape of it. So this is just to kind of pretend that I have a more pointed face. You also gotta be really careful, otherwise it can kind of look like you have a beard, and I don't, <laughs> I don't look like I have a beard. I will always be a little bit sad that I can't grow a beard. I'm kind of envious of men in the sense that they can like change their face so completely just by growing a moustache or a beard. If I were a man, I would have like a really 
nice moustache. I have like a little kind of cavalier moustache. Blendy, blendy, blend. Put a black eyeshadow on here for the uh, death rock element. Makes such a difference, doesn't it? I've got here this eyeshadow from Baby Bat Beauty, who is an underrated brand, I think. Look up Baby Bat Beauty. This is a wonderful matte grey, so I think I'll have a crack at dusting that around me. Oh yes, it's very pigmenty. Oh golly. It's way more pigmenty than I expected it was going to be. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. A lot of people say, when they see me put makeup on, that it looks really fucking messy while I'm doing it. But it all somehow comes together in the end. I think that's pretty funny. I know that nose contouring is like quite a big thing at the moment. But I feel like a lot of people overdo it, so it looks like they've just got this one weird thin bone. It looks extremely unnatural, and I'm like, is that what you're trying to achieve? Embrace your nose. Your nose is lovely. Over the top of the nose, I've got this Natural Collection Heather colour. And what I think is quite funny about this Natural Collection eyeshadow, I love the colour. I love sort of smoky, lavender-y colours, is that it says, avoid contact with the eyes. Which I think is very strange, seeing as it's an eyeshadow. What's in it, that it's supposed to stay away from your eyes. Seem safe. Just gonna give that a give that a dust. A bit of dust. We're going for nice empty eye sockets here. I like the colour on the lid to stand out and be a lighter colour because it makes the eyes look a little larger. Primer, putting that on here. Should we talk about something else that isn't makeup? Is there anything that you've been learning about lately? During this quarantine, it's been a good time to get in a bit of study or learn a new skill for those of us who aren't able to, you know, go to a workplace. I've taken up trying to learn the bass guitar. Also I've been learning a lot about how steam engines work. Yesterday I was learning about how to load and fire a cannon, how flintlocks work, how flintlock pistols work. And for some reason I just get way too excited about steam engines. I spent hours the other night just watching steam powered tractors and like various steam powered vehicles and how they how they work, how you get them going and I was this is another of the natural collection don't get in your eyes eyeshadows called sloot and I'm gonna stick that. Oh it's so not obvious. I say like oh let's not keep talking about makeup and then I immediately start talking about makeup. A little white in the centre. Mm. There we go, that's better isn't it? I don't know if you believe in past lives. I don't know if I do, I'm, I'm open to the idea of it. Some cultures do believe in them. Sometimes we're just born with certain interests or things that we're sort of drawn to for no particular reason. And I sort of wonder if, if that's like me and steam trains. Sail ships too. But there's something about steam trains. I always have too, my whole life. I don't remember a time when I haven't been excited by steam trains. Some sort of echo of a, of a past life, <laughs> you know. I have to concentrate doing this because if I get the shape of it wrong, it completely fucks the whole look. It, it, I mean, it, the look. <laughs> it completely fucks the whole eye shape. I did that one a bit too quickly and it looks shit. I've been trying to do my eyebrows a bit differently lately, especially as I have grown them back. It's very hard to put eyeshadow or liquid eyeliner or whatever over full bushy eyebrows. I'm trying to do them a wee bit thinner. My, my eyebrows evolve over time, so this is where we're at at the moment. I'm not leaving them like this. This is just so I can see where they start and I'll put the rest of them in with a, a thinner eyeliner. And I'll just chuck on a bit of chuck on a bit of the older eyeliner there. My plan was to leave here in about two weeks. My plan had been to spend a maximum of six months in New Zealand. I was gonna have spent the last few weeks down south with my family and while I was there I was gonna have organized some sort of small church wedding for me and my man thing. Directly after that we would have gone to Scotland where all my things are and then two weeks later have gone to the the biggie tea the way I've got it driven in Germany. But that's been cancelled so that's cool. All the festivals have been cancelled. I don't have my passport back from the UK visa office yet because they've closed. We're kind of fucked because I've expected to not be here for that long. I would sort of brought with me about six months worth of stuff. Six months worth of skincare products and hair products and makeup and stuff that you can't get here. It's gotten to the point where everything's running out now and I can't get more stuff. I was like, oh, it'll be okay because, you know, May I'll be back over in the UK and I'll be able to buy everything again once I run out and, um, no, I can't. So that shit. I do really now wish I'd stocked up on liquid eyeliner because I'm running low on it and I need it. This eyeliner's a bit 
sort of split and munted on the end. Bit of a fucking design flaw of that NYX. This is the Epic Ink liner from NYX. in a quite a straight-ish line. Yoff. When I look back at some of my older videos and I, I'm like, what the fuck was I doing with my makeup, man? Oh, well, I've just totally screwed that. Oh, well. I'd feel pretty at the time, but I'm looking back at it and I'm like, holy Christ. I mean, like I said, I'm going to try and do them quite thin. And maybe, I used to do them quite rounded, so maybe I'll try and do them all rounded this time. Although angular is really the... I feel like a way to define gothic makeup is it is quite angular if you look at it. it it tends to be a lot of sharp straight lines so much hair in the way it's so awkward that looks like absolute shit in my head i'm just like keep them straight but curved that's kind of the same as saying a glossy matte i figure if i just drink enough of this it won't matter I won't care anymore what my eyebrows look like. I shall put on a little bit of colour underneath. Their friend Anne gave me this palette like more than a year ago and I have used it pretty much every day and it still looks brand new. Lunatic Cosmetics Lab. It's fucking incredible. It's a contour palette but it's like you can use it for your entire face. My favourite shade from it is this dried blood red colour. Just uh, stick a wee bit of that on there. They're just so extremely natural. The colour of a bruise. Under the eye. Now we can we can put a wee bit here in the corners too, so that the colour I put on later will have something to blend into. Um, the next thing I'm going to use from this palette, which is something daring that I'm going to try, and I figure I'd better do it before I put all the darker colours on around my eyes, is I'm going to I'm going to wear blush. I'm going to use this light pink hair. Blusher is something I have always loathed because when I was younger I had very very rosy red cheeks but I feel like when it's just a little bit up the top like that on the cheekbones it can look quite sweet very rosy lots of life in those cheeks yeah that's the other reason I don't usually wear it is because I like to look kind of dead <laughs> I use grey to contour I use a lot of bruise color purpley grayish bluish sort of shades on my face so that I look a little bit cadaverous and wearing blush is like breathing life into the cheeks what is this look gonna be is this like a combination of the 20s the 80s and the 1780s i don't know but it's what we're doing should i try like a little dab of this brighter pink oh yes there we are now we're in sunburn territory there we go i found that colors like this like this really suit my face personally these kind of like plummy colors What a mess, what's she doing? Fuck knows. I like makeup to look a little bit imperfect, you know? I like it to be kind of messy. I like all my aesthetic to be just a little bit messy. Imperfection is perfection. Speaking of like antique weaponry, something that I really want to collect is swords. I've always thought how cool it would be just to have a room that was all swords. That was one of the things I was going to do in Germany actually with my bedroom, as I was just going to start collecting swords and just have them all over the walls in, in my bedroom so that if anybody like broke in, they'd be like, wow, look at all the swords. Very easy to find something to like fight them back with because I guess that'll be blunt except for the one that I knew wasn't blunt. I just kind of like the idea of just having a room covered in swords. <laughs> I have barely fucking changed the way I've done my makeup for absolutely years. I am so boring. It's just kind of become my face. Found a look that I'm kind of fine with, suits me, other people say it's nice. Sometimes I like to look Edwardian, sometimes Victorian, sometimes I like to look very 1980s. This general style of makeup that I usually do kind of works for all of those things. Maybe I'm imagining that, but to me it feels like it does. I have this really nice tapered brush which is good for the black eyeshadow because it will, it kind of goes down like, like a taper and it can get into the cut crease or whatever and it looks very nice. I currently don't know where that is so I've got this kind of thick bushy one which might look potentially quite bad but whatever. Cider has kicking in a little bit so I'm already at the point where I, I don't care as much about it being perfect. I always do the black quite densely around this part of the eyes. Create a sort of droplet shape but not really. Oh you may be thinking what on earth was the point in putting all those other colours on your eyes if you're just going to put black over it at the end? I hear you possibly asking. I don't know. I've just always done it. Get it right into the eye bags there. 
I'm going to accentuate those a little bit. And I like to put a wee bit of shiny eyeliner on top of that just so it shows up better, so it catches the light slightly. I've got, as I've always said, disappointingly thin lips. I would maybe someday like to try a bit of lip filler. I've tried so many times to do my lipstick and lip liner and stuff in a way that it looks like I've got bigger, boofier lips, but I just don't. A lot of us don't. And they're very in fashion at the moment, as they have the big, big, big lips. So I've been thinking more that it'd be nice to try doing different shapes and styles of lipstick to complement small lips, rather than pretend that they are something that they aren't. Because it certainly can get to the point with overlining lips and stuff that it does start to look quite comical, where it just you can tell. Um, I'm sure I'm guilty of that a lot. I always overline my lips, which I am going to do, but I am going to have a bit of a go at a ver my version of the Rose Bottle Bee Sting style lips that were popular in the 1920s and also in the 18th century. When I say my version, I mean I'm not going to make them like little sweet pink rose buds. I'm going to go for my usual corpse colours. I probably have this lip pencil in my bloodstream because I've used it so much. A moonwalk from NYX. NYX, which is no longer available in New Zealand great thank you instead of overlining all the way out I'm going to only overline the very center for a sort of more round a more more of a roundness and not overline too much either Another thing that I absolutely love that I'm going to run out of. <laughs> the NYX Moonwalk Lipstick. I don't put that on very thickly. I kind of smear it on with the finger. So it more like stains the lips. Just a little bit. Yes, the piercings make it kind of awkward. Here's one of the last remaining NYX products I was able to get here in New Zealand. Turned up lipstick. I don't know what the shade is called. But it's a nice plum colour and just sticking it in the middle like that i'm gonna have a small mouth might as well have a very small mouth i pretty much always do this with lipsticks especially bullet lipsticks i don't put much actual color on them i just put a little bit just a little bit of color and then blend it with my finger. I'll do a little bit of red as well on the inside rouge edition velvet from bourgeois just on the very inside and they get slightly so it blends in too just a little bit oh, oh, just a little bit voila i use several different eyeliners every time every time i do my makeup because they all have a different purpose and because my eyesight's not very good i feel like i spend half my time when i'm putting makeup on like trying to tell different black sticks apart years ago i made a video on just how to draw on false eyelashes little, little one in the center there that looks bad but okay just very light little looks at first glance like it might be longer bottom lashes quite like a little bit of sheen on marbles. Should I use white or silver sheen? I think I'll go for white. Just do a wee bit of a wee tiny bit of a highlight on the eyelids there. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit of shine. And maybe a wee bit up there too. Yes, I am putting it on with my finger. So I don't smoke. I feel like any one of those long cigarette holders. The white makeup that you see on people's faces in the 16th, 17th, 18th century is called ceruse. You might know that it was poisonous, that what gave it its white colour was white lead. Very toxic. Uh, and it totally fucks your skin. So it was kind of a vicious circle, I guess. Like it would, it would damage your skin and then you'd have to keep wearing more of it to cover up the damage you'd done. Don't you feel thankful for the products we have now? Although I kind of wonder, like we look back at things from not even that long ago like when people when asbestos came out and it was like wasn't this a wonderful wonderful material we look at things that people used to use all the time and think oh my gosh that was so dangerous it was so poisonous and i kind of wonder like in 50 years you know what are people going to look back at and go oh wow i can't believe everybody had one of those in their pocket i can't believe people put that on their face i can't believe they ate that what's going to be the the poisonous deadly thing that we're all using now that we aren't aware is actually killing us pink blushing cheeks Oh, so lifelike. So lifelike. 
The glue feels still a trifle weird. I still wish I hadn't already teased my hair because I have. Oh, look at those fucking roots, man. Because I have been kind of in the mood to experiment with hair a wee bit, which hardly ever happens. I always do the same thing. Uh, so that is our slightly different from usual face. Oh my god, it's so windy outside. It's kind of scary. I'm gonna fix this up a wee bit. Um, it's starting to look pretty bad because I haven't dyed it for such a long time. People ask me, do you ever brush your hair? Yeah, I do. I do. Smooth and lovely only a couple of days ago. I really need to cut my hair. Oh, maybe I should cut like a mullet. These bobby pins are sacrosanct at the moment because I can't get any more. I keep losing them because it is the nature of bobby pins to become lost. I got this thing of cheap hair gel from the supermarket. This is wet look gel and it's the gel that, oh it's so thin, god. It's the gel I used to use when I was way younger. I don't know if this is gonna work or just look fucking gross. Usually I'd use like oil or something or serum. If you've been tuning in to my weekly live stream videos, which have been wonderful fun by the way, you will have noticed that I am wearing a band across my forehead most of the time and that is to hide the roots. Try and pin this bad boy into place. Mm -hmm. Not sure, not sure if good or just awful. Oh, the roots poking out on the sides. I figure with the headband, those like thin headbands, which have a name, were popular in the 1920s. Wider headbands were popular in the 80s. We're still weirdly blending those looks. Straighten the bangs. Just a little bit of half brown. <laughs> oh god. It needs a wee bit of black spray, but there isn't any. Okay, I'm seeing that these are the clothes that I slept in, I should probably put something else on. What kind of outfit should I wear? I don't have very many choices of outfits. I've been living out of a suitcase the last six months. I really, really miss my clothes. Let's see what I have. Well, I've put on some clothes. Very simple, kind of boring clothes. Just a wee tank top with a lace trim. With that weird mesh thing that I found in the op shop. A time plain, long, stretchy black skirt. Woohoo! I want a belt from Primark. I miss Primark. Long sleeve or short sleeve? What's better? Anyway, it's time to put on some bling. Ta da! Got my bling on. I have these two Alchemy Gothic bracelets which are always on my body. I can't remove this one. Favorite necklace that I wear all the time. I've got on some Killstar Ark earrings. I've got my I think they're coyote bones on my ears as well. I also have this single vertebra here, which I bought recently from a fair, and I just knotted some of these cheap bead necklaces together and uh, put that on there. So I think that looks kind of okay. And of course, some ring. Oh, I also put an earring there. Maybe that's a wee bit daft, but I have put earrings in my hair before <laughs> to create a little thingy. <laughs> Lastly, very important touch some rose cross um i am a little obsessed with black phoenix alchemy lab perfumes <sighs> this one's so powerful because i love rose scented things i don't have a wand cap for this one so it's a bit awkward to put it on <laughs> put on the clothes so it lasts the night food in the hair so i think i'm ready for my imaginary night out at my imaginary party but first some drama bottle opener which I always bring with me for some reason. Some more handheld mirror. A wallet. Oh what a cool wallet. Look at that it's even got my name on it. Wow my word what a, what a fine wallet that is. Lip balm. A bit of makeup. And I'm ready to go. Ready to go out. Oh yeah. That's right. And see all my friends and dance and listen to music and have a nice just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we won't be doing that for a while. Yep. 
wow, I am having a great time. So I guess I'll just sit here alone. 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 Yep. Hands up if you're as bummed as I am at the prospect of no socializing for a very long time. Now, I'm not an extrovert, but I'm not an introvert either, and I invest a lot of my happiness in the big festivals I go to every year. You can see my vlogs of those festivals, Mariluna and Amphi and Wave Cottage Treffin in particular. They've all been cancelled this year, and those are the only times I get to see a lot of my friends. You know, because they're gathering, people come from all over the world, and they're magical, you know? I've been thinking, it's okay, it's a wee bit lonely and boring here, but soon, soon, in only a few weeks, I'll be able to go over there and there'll be all that stuff over the summer. Bit shit. Disappointing is a colossal understatement. I do think that it is good for the spirit to sometimes just put on a nice outfit. A lot of people here have been doing formal Friday, which I have yet to take part in, just wearing that, like wearing a suit or wearing a gown or something and then just doing whatever. Good for the spirit to occasionally dress up, make yourself feel nice, put on a bit of makeup, put on a bit of perfume, some jewellery, whatever, make yourself feel good. Even if you've got nowhere to go and no one to show it to except yourself. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining me this evening. I shall be spending the remainder of it alone doing absolutely nothing for the foreseeable future <laughs> if you have not already done so and come to join us please subscribe to my channel as always take care of yourselves be nice to each other especially at the moment and i will see you all next time but probably not for a while in the flesh bye